Oh, hello there. I always wanted to do one of those corny intros. In bass fishing, I think there are a lot of things that we almost put too much of an emphasis on, but at the same time, there are some things that I think we don't put enough emphasis on. And today, there's something really particular about a drop shot that I think a lot of anglers get wrong. And I wanna talk about that. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by Monster Bass. By now, I am sure that you have heard of Monster Bass, but if you haven't, Monster Bass is a company that will send you a box full of lures every month to your house. I mean, who doesn't love that? Now, something that separates Monster Bass from other companies that do this is that Monster Bass actually will send you a box full of lures that works in your region. It's not the exact same box that everybody gets. It's a set of lures that really works in your region of the country. And if you know anything about bass fishing, different regions of the country have different characteristics and certain lures will work in those regions that won't work elsewhere. So if you guys are interested in a Monster Bass subscription, hit that link down below in the description and pick you up a box today. I saw two little boulders right over there. Pitched right between them and she was on it. Shallow fish. A drop shot truly is one of the best tools that we have as an angler to go out and catch bass. And the reason it's such a good tool is that you can fish it in very shallow water. You can fish it in extremely deep water. You can fish it in ponds. You can fish it in rivers. You can fish it in lakes. You can fish it for all different species. And so learning to master the drop shot is something that I think as anglers, we should all strive to do. Now, with that being said, there is one element about fishing a drop shot that I think a lot of anglers don't put enough of an emphasis on. And I think it's one of the most important parts of your drop shot. And that key element is your leader length. And when I'm talking about a leader, I'm referring to the distance between your bait or your lure and the weight on your drop shot. If you read a lot of articles or listen to a lot of videos about drop shot, most people are gonna say 12 to 18 inches. 12 to 18 inches is what you wanna use for a drop shot leader length. And yes, that will absolutely catch fish, but there are certain situations in certain times of the year where going a lot shorter than 12 inches or a lot longer than 18 inches is going to drastically help you to get more bites. And today, I wanna to talk about four situations where going shorter or longer is really, really gonna help you to catch more fish. Let's first talk about fishing a short leader like I am today. As you can see, I only have about a four or five inch leader on my drop shot right now. And one big situation that I have seen a ton of different times on a ton of different lakes. If you've ever been out there fishing a drop shot before and you seem to be missing a lot of fish on a drop shot, like it seems like they're picking that bait up and running and you go to set the hook and you're just not getting a hook in that fish, that is a key time when you want to switch over to a very short drop shot. The reason being is that a lot of times when you are missing fish on a drop shot, it's actually because those fish are biting the weight. I know it may sound a little bit crazy, but there are definitely times when bass will actually pick up your weight. They will bite your weight instead of your bait. So when you go to set the hook, you think your fish has your bait, but it actually is just swimming around with your weight. I've actually visually seen this in the water before. I feel like there are just certain days that bass want something that is on the bottom. And so that's when I shorten up my leader length to be very, very short. Now, if you go down to a three, four inch leader and you're still having this same issue, those are the times you're gonna wanna switch over to something else like a Ned Rig, something that is actually on the bottom because that way you are going to catch those fish that are picking up that weight. Now, the second time that I almost always go with a shorter leader is when I am fishing around the bass spawn. Today, I'm actually doing just a little bit of pond fishing and I know that there are some fish that are actually on beds. I can't really visibly see them, but I know that they are on beds. And anytime I feel like fish are on beds or spawning, that's when I go with a really, really short leader. And the big reason is that those fish are kind of really locked onto a small area on the bottom. And if they're only in a foot or two foot or even three foot of water, I just don't want a leader that is halfway up the water column. I want it really close to the bottom. That really helps me to get a lot more bites. 
Now we've talked about short leaders, but now I wanna talk about longer leaders. And this is something that I actually do quite a bit, is fish a longer leader, something that is two foot, even three foot in length. And just so you guys know, when you are fishing this, it's a little bit of a bear to cast, especially if you're fishing around a pond where there's a lot of trees or you're on the shoreline. But I truly believe that this can help you to get bites on a drop shot when having a leader length of that 12 to 18 inches will not get you bit at all. Years ago, I was fishing a tournament and I actually had a co-angler in my boat this day. One of the first things that he said to me when we started fishing that day was, wow, man, that's a really, really long leader and during that tournament I was actually fishing a leader on my drop shot that was about 30 inches so it was pretty long now during that day both myself and my co-angler were fishing a drop shot we were fishing offshore where I really felt like we kind of had almost equal opportunity to catch a bass but with that being said I did really really well in the event I didn't win it I got a check in that event out of probably 40 or so anglers and the co-angler that was in my boat caught zero fish on a drop shot and the big difference was I was fishing that really, really long leader and he was fishing a 12 inch leader. Now, the reason that I went with that long leader was because we were fishing towards the end of summer. This was late August, early September. And a lot of times this is when I'm going to fish a really, really long leader. And the reason being is that I have seen on so many different lakes across the country that bass during late summer will just suspend off the bottom by two foot, three foot, four foot. And if you're fishing something that is below those fish, a lot of times you are not going to get bit. So fishing a drop shot on a really, really long leader, I was actually bringing my plastic up to the level where those fish were, and I was catching substantially more bass than other guys were on a drop shot. So anytime I am fishing in late summer, August, September, in those hot, hot parts of the month, and I feel like those fish are suspended, that is when I'm gonna fish that longer leader. Now, another time that I'm going to fish a long leader is when I am fishing around a lot of aquatic vegetation. Whether I'm fishing in ponds or lakes, I have seen it where using a, a 30 inch leader, a 36 inch leader, and kind of bringing that bait out of the grass or whatever is on the bottom is actually going to help you get a lot more bites. I actually first discovered this when I was fishing in my parents' pond growing up because they had a lot of scum, kind of nasty grass on the bottom. And I was actually using a really, really long leader and I was getting that bait away from all that nastiness on the bottom and I started catching a lot of bass. So the next time you're out there fishing a drop shot, experiment with your leader length. And if you wanna know exactly how I go about rigging up a drop shot. I'm gonna leave a link for a video right here that kind of goes into detail on how I go about setting up my drop shot. So if you like this video, I think you'll like that video. Also, don't forget to comment below any of your questions and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.